Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about GitHub Desktop, and we're talking about it specifically because GitHub Desktop 2.0 was just released. So in this video, we're going to start with what GitHub Desktop is all about, and then we'll jump into a little hands-on, and then finally look at what is new in 2.0. So if you're interested in just the 2.0 stuff, jump ahead to the video, I'll throw a timestamp down below. But for those of you out there that are unfamiliar with GitHub Desktop, what you can think of this as is basically easy mode GitHub. Now a lot of people find using Git commands a little daunting and will often want to use a client or some kind of an interface for that. And that's exactly what GitHub Desktop is all about. You can grab it for Windows and Mac OS at desktop.github.com. I will link that in the linked article down below, so don't worry about that URL. Uh, but oddly enough, it is only available for Mac OS and Windows, which is strange because this is an Electron-based application. Now, there may be builds of it out there, but the only official ports out there are for those two operating systems. Now, if you've ever worked with Git, or you've never worked with Git, for example, uh, it's a source repository. Basically, it is a way of backing up your projects or synchronizing your projects uh, with an external repository so that multiple people can work on it. Now, even makes sense to work uh, with a repository even if you are working by yourself. It allows you to do things like versioning, um, which allows you to go back in time if you make a mistake or if you want to go to a previous branch or so on. And of course, it allows multiple developers to work together and to merge their changes. And what um, GitHub Desktop is, is basically a desktop interface over that. Normally, what you do when you're working with Git is entirely command line based. And it, like I said earlier on, can be a bit daunting. So the application, and here it is running right now, this is what you get when you initially launch GitHub Desktop. And you see here, you will get a list of, once you've logged in with your GitHub account, of course, you will get a list of the repositories in your account. Or you can go ahead and clone a repository from the internet. So for example, if I wanted to get something from GitHub, uh, I could do my own repository, so I could go to a URL. So say, for example, I want a Godot. I just type Godot, get the Godot repository, and that will now clone it to the location I specify down here. Um, or you can just paste in the Git URL directly from GitHub and grab it that way. Or you can, get, once again, if you've got your own repositories you're working on, such as the uh, Godot 2D tutorial projects I did earlier on, I can go ahead and grab that guy and we'll just say, okay, so it's selected, and now I'm gonna clone it. Where am I gonna clone it to? Uh, there, I don't know if I've already used that, so let's throw some junk on the end, so make sure. So it's gonna grab this repository right there and clone it to this location on my machine and go ahead and clone it. Now this is no different than a git clone command line command, but you don't need to know that command to pull this off. Now it's pulled down the repository and you will see, well, well not a whole lot going on. We see a history of what has happened with this project uh, and we can see the changes that we have made. Now at this point in time, we've never actually made any changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this repository. You see nice and conveniently, we have things like here. We can open it up right in Explorer. We can view it on the GitHub webpage or in this particular case, if you have Visual Studio Code installed, we can go ahead and open it directly in Visual Studio Code, which is what I have just done. So now I'm gonna go in here and select the readme file. And I guess I'm going to close that down because I just updated something. And here is an update that I really should remove. And I'll go ahead and I'll save that. And then we'll flip on back to the GitHub desktop and you'll notice it automatically picked up the change. And you see here, it's highlighting the changes. So if I was working with multiple developers, I could now do a commit of this one and we could merge in the changes, especially if multiple people were working on this file at a time. So you see here, I can do my, uh, my uh, update command here. So I can say updated to demo on YouTube, like so. And then I could commit that guy back up. So now I just did a commit to my repository. Um, I can also here see the changes history. So we'll see right here, this is the update that I really should remove. And you can actually go back in time. So right now we're running in full screen mode. I press F11 and you'll see we have options here. So we got the menu up here. Now what I could do is say, oh wait, I don't wanna do any of that. And I could actually undo all of the changes. So we've got various different branches I could go through. I could switch branches. Uh, I could create a pull request directly from here. So a lot of the things that you would find potentially complicated from working at a command line Git, Git desktop makes incredibly easy. So if you're not really comfortable working at the command line level, this is a great option for you. And you can handle multiple different repositories. You can handle multiple different branches. So if I wanted to switch to a different branch that I added earlier on, I could do so. If I wanted to see the pull request here, uh, since this is a project that only I work on, um, I'm not gonna see much there. But if you're dealing with a more complicated scenario with multiple developers and so on, this functionality is, um, it's what you do from the command line, frankly, but it's a heck of a lot easier to maintain this way. Now, do keep in mind, a lot of tools will have um, 
Git integration built directly in, including uh, Visual Studio Code. This is kind of a centralized place for managing all of that. And as you saw earlier on, we do have that um, integration into uh, Visual Studio Code directly here as well. So if you've always wanted to kind of get involved with Git, but you're not really a command line warrior type person, I do highly recommend you check out um, GitHub Desktop. It does make your life a fair bit simpler. Now, the, the topic of source code and uh, version controlling isn't the sexiest subject, so I think we're going to end the demonstration there. But what this does is really makes a lot of things that might be initially kind of tricky a lot more easy for you to access and learn and to go from there. So if you want to start here and then eventually learn the command line, that is definitely an option for you. So now let's go on back to the website. So once again, it's available for download in binary form for Windows and Mac OS at desktop.github.com. Another thing about this project is it is actually entirely open source and predictably enough, it's it's hosted up on uh, GitLab, wait, no, GitHub. Uh, it's under the MIT license as you can see right here. So if you want to fork this, do whatever you want with it, or let's say you want to make a Linux port of it, uh, you do have that option as well. You've also got a couple of different ways you can install it. You can install it via Chocolatey on Windows or Mac OS using Homebrew. It does seem Arch Linux users can install using AUR. So it looks like there is a version for Linux out there. It's just not got a binary or I, I, I don't know why. No idea why that is. But there does look like there are at least options for Linux users. Now, in terms of the 2.0 release, what we're looking at here is a couple of neat new features. Now, the first one is stashing. Stashing is kind of cool. Uh, it's a common situation. You are in the middle of reproducing and fixing a bug, and you need to switch context temporarily. Git branches are incredibly useful, uh, but do uh, what do you want to do with your changes that are in progress? In desktop 2.0, if you're not ready to do a commit with your work, you can choose to bring your changes to a new branch or keep them on your current branch. So you can kind of like, again, the name applies at all, stash it and, you know, in the meantime, when you do that switch, uh, kind of a handy little feature. Next thing we got is rebasing. Developers, I've also shared that many teams prefer a clean commit history without merge commits. This is a great example of where preferences are dramatically different. If you're used to merging branches normally, you can still continue using the same workflow. But if you work in a repository where you don't want those merge commits, Desktop 2.0 now supports rebasing to help you keep that commit history clean. And we've got some things about collaboration. So most features we've released since uh, desktop 1.0 encourage collaboration, but collaboration doesn't have to be tedious. Working together to create new things should be fun and small things can make a big difference. Since 1.0, we introduced features that help foster a creative and supportive team dynamic. You can add emojis to commit messages, select co-author of a commit just by mentioning their GitHub name, push your work to GitHub with uh, suggested next steps when you're done committing, share credit for work accomplished uh, with others have never been easier. Now, I don't see a single thing in that that I would traditionally consider fun, uh, but it does give you a better community collaboration type environment. Um, and really that's kind of it. You can see a little bit more. You can, if you've got a suggested next step, they do have a site available for uh, suggesting it, but that is essentially the, um, the 2.0 release. Now, if you want a little bit of fine level of details of what else was added in this particular release, you can see here, there was a quick fix released today, uh, same day as the 2.0 release. So obviously there was a crash that they fixed, but otherwise you can get full details in the release notes, which I will link in the linked article down below. So if you want to jump in and see some of the uh, bug fixes or improvements that have been added in this particular release, release, or of course, these uh, green highlight features are the new features that have been added to um, GitHub Desktop. This will be available in the link down below. And as you can see, it's it's not been too, too long. It's only been a month since the last minor release, but this is a 2.0 release. So obviously, it, it, it's quite incremental over you know these relatively minor releases that happened in the meantime. So definitely a nice giant step forward or a nice incremental step forward at the very least. And once again, if you are interested in getting into source control and using GitHub, but you are kind of afraid of it and you find that working from the command line is a little too daunting, I do highly recommend you check this out. This is a very um, polished, clean, easy to use, intuitive, uh, and the workflow is fine. I, I don't see any real problems here. So if you're um, not working in a tool that makes GitHub kind of or Git commits completely um, transparent or you know hidden from you, this is a good option for kind of bridging that middle ground. It allows you to handle and access and update and merge and so on from a Git repository without having to learn all of the command line magic and so on. So if you haven't checked out uh, GitHub Desktop yet, the 2.0 release was just released. It is a nice step forward and it's nice to see GitHub is being 
pushed forward by uh, community features and they're doing things in a way that's optional. So if some people don't like doing certain things certain ways, they've got their own particular way, but there was enough of a community request for certain functionality that they implemented it. And you always like to see that in software and especially when they provide it as a choice, like what you saw there. So anyways, that is GitHub Desktop 2.0. Uh, again, I highly recommend you check it out, especially if you are near fight to the world of Git. Uh, it does make this stuff really, really simple. So if you want to start uh, accessing source code repositories, but you don't want to like dwell in the command line, check this out. And uh, let me know what you think of it. Have you been using it in the past? Do you like these new features that they've added? Are they important to you? Let me know all these things in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.